Keith Hetzel. I'm a native of Wisconsin Rapids. Um, I have been back and forth. I move around the state a lot of places with my job, but I always kept ties back here because my parents and my family were here. Um, I came back in 13 to take care of my parents, and I was disillusioned by what I've seen Wisconsin Rapids become. Um, I've run for mayor, I've run for this position once before, I'm running for it again. You know, a third time hopefully is a charm. <laughs> my background is in education, uh, music education primarily. Uh, when I was in the Milwaukee area, I was performing with international stars. So it was a lot of fun. But like I say, there's something more that I want to give back to the community that I grew up in. The number one challenge that I still see, even though there's been um, research on this, is the train situation. When you take a look at that train and it's going for 45 minutes or longer, and you have an entire population of the city that is cut off from medical assistance, we can't have that anymore. We need to make sure that there's something done so that people can get to the hospital. Otherwise, the closest hospital is at Marshfield, and that's a 45 minute drive. And we have excellent facilities right here, but our citizens can't get to it if they're west of those railroad tracks. But what I do, I'm going to want to find out, because I have heard that there were some people that just didn't make it to the hospital because of the train. I want to hear from those people. I want to hear from their relatives, find out what their thoughts were on the whole thing. Um, I want to keep pushing this because there's got to be a solution to the whole problem. We can't just let this go by. What's the cost of one life lost if they can't get the medical attention they need at our facility? When we're looking at the budget, we need to see what uh, the monies are being used for. Are they being utilized properly? Are they going for the greatest amount of people in the citizens of Wisconsin Rapids? If we're spending a lot of money on one area that just really isn't producing anything, then, then maybe that's an area where we can cut. But if it's something like the library, and we know that we've talked about you know, talks have been held about cutting the library budget. There are an awful lot of people that use our, our library. Yeah, you can get everything off the internet, but there's still an awful lot of resources at our library that we can't afford to cut. So we need to look at those things. Other things, maybe we start looking at some corporate sponsorship of maybe the Aquatic Center and other things like this. They're, they're out there. They're out there. If American Family can sponsor the former Miller Park, at whatever cost, maybe we can get some of the cranberry growers, the Cranberry Growers Association or something like that to come in and sponsor some of our activities here. I think, the, I think that the budget for the library has to be looked at annually, but I also think that it has to be increased because there's so many people that use that library and there are so many activities there for young, for old, for every age group in this community. Um, it serves a viable purpose and we need to keep that going. Um, yeah, I haven't done any budgeting with the city yet, I'll be honest with you, but when it comes down to a resource for education, for entertainment, for uh, history, for everything else, that's our greatest source right here in Wisconsin Rapids right now. Yes, I would support that very highly. The reason I would support that is because of the fact we have this wonderful solar energy program going on over the library. Look how that's affected. All of our city buildings should be using renewable energy. Um, there's only so much oil in the ground, folks. And if we don't, you know, if we tap out of that at some point or, you know, continue to have wars over it, what good is this doing us? We can use the wind, we can use the solar, we can use water energy. 
All of those things are there and we should be utilizing it. And I would see that with the uh, act going on, yeah, there's also money set aside for electric vehicles. Maybe we can look at getting some of the um, city owned vehicles on electric as well because of the fact that if it's there, why not use it? I'm asking for the vote from the citizens in District 1 for City Council. I believe that I can make a difference on the council. I believe that my ideas and my beliefs and my passions can be very beneficial to the growth of the city. We need to look at things that are going to bring in new jobs, and I don't just mean part-time. We need to find industries here. We need to look at other communities as to why they're growing so well and we seem to be going nowhere. Um, I'm sorry, just because you bring in a Starbucks or a, or a Caribou Coffee, that doesn't bring in, you know, living wage jobs. Uh, why should you vote for me? Because I'm going to fight for District 1. Um, and the thing is, I'm going to be real honest with you, if you vote for me or you vote for my opponent, I don't really care. I, well, I mean, I do care that you would vote for me. But if you vote for my opponent, that's fine. But please get out and exercise your right to vote because the only way that any change can be made is if the citizens speak up and say, this is what we want or this is what we do not want. If you don't vote, we have no way of knowing what it is that you want.